So welcome to the Comanche Trail Street and Drainage Improvements Community Meeting. Uh, my name is Justin Naylor. I'm the project manager for the city of Fort Worth. Uh, moving forward, we also have Mike Bennett, who will be the project manager of the design and through construction for the city of Fort Worth. Uh, we've, we've had multiple consultants helping us develop this project. We have Frieza Nichols, who did the project development for this project. And then we also have Pape Dawson, who will be the engineer of record on the project that will be responsible for, for drawing all the plans okay. and, and, and seeing it through construction. Uh, we do have a project website uh, and the link is below. Uh, so if you go to the city of Fort Worth website, fortworthtexas.gov, you can search Comanche Trail HROM, H-R-O-N, and you should be able to find our website at that, uh, that way. Uh, this is just a screenshot of what our, our web page looks like right now. Uh, updates will be posted to the, to the website as we progress the project along. Uh, so just to give you a little background on, on where we are, uh, I work in the Transportation and Public Works Department in the Capital Project Delivery Group. Um, and, and that's the group that's sponsoring this project. Um, and this project comes about through our hazardous roadway overtopping mitigation program, or our HROM or HROM. Uh, this program, the, the focus of it is life safety concerns. We want to make sure that we are uh, addressing the most hazardous and the uh, most hazardous crossings uh, that present a life safety concern. Um, and basically, then that and that means making sure that we're not we're, we're addressing hazards that can sweep cars off the road and cause a potential loss of life. This project is currently in what we're calling, what we call project development. So it's a kind of an early phase. It's where we are, we, we've prioritized all of our hazardous roadway overtopping sites. And we, we're, we're seeking to better understand the source and the character of the flooding. Uh, this, is, this is also the point where we'll be coordinating with city plans, like the master thoroughfare plans or a park master plan uh, to make sure that whatever improvements we put in now will work for, for the long term. This is also where we're looking at existing utilities such as water, sewer, uh, communication lines, overhead power. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a good handle on what could potentially slow the project down. Uh, we also look at what required permits we have. Yes, we are a city, so but we do we are still required to get permits from other entities as well. Uh, so this would be like our floodplain development permit, which which regulates work within the floodplain. Uh, this would be other permits with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And then we also want to make sure we understand other site constraints, such as, such as what right of way is available to work within, uh, what easements are, are needed, or what easements are available. Uh, the, the ultimate goal of project development is to provide effective, affordable, and acceptable projects. Uh, and what what that means is we want the project to be effective. We want to we want it to accomplish the goal that we set out to do. We want it to be affordable, as in we. So we want to make sure that we're utilizing the dollars the best that we can, and we want it to be accessible not only to the city. Uh, to, to the cities involved, but also to the to the residents that are impacted by the project. So to, to provide a little background on the project and some a little bit of the justification, uh, Comanche Trail between Malaga Drive and Marina Drive, and I apologize if, if I pronounced Malaga Drive incorrectly. I've heard multiple pronunciations, and I'm doing the best that I can on that. Um, there's a channel, there's a creek that crosses Comanche Trail uh, between those two streets and it overtops the roadway. Uh, and, and it does present a life safety, uh, not only to vehicles that may accidentally cross whenever it's you know dark and raining and there's water washing of the roadway, but it also, you know, emergency services may have to be rerouted during, during that type of event. Uh, so to provide a little bit more detail, that, that hatching in the blue represents the current floodplain uh, if, you, if you'll note that this project kind of uh, borders between the city of Fort Worth and city of Lake Worth, which I'll take, take a moment to pause that we have been coordinating with city of Lake Worth staff uh, on this as, as there will be some water and sanitary sewer utilities that are owned by city of Lake Worth that, that will be uh, uh, impacted and I'll show a little bit more detail on that uh, later. And, and then just another view, uh, this is a Google Street view. Uh, you, you can see here, uh, the orange construction barrels that are out, and those are out for the purpose of barricading the roadway whenever water does get over that, over the roadway. 
Um, so this is just kind of those Google Street View cars, they just drive by every so often and it, it kind of speaks uh, loudly that this is a regularly overtopped road if, if Google Street View happens to catch the barrels out. And so now we're going to kind of run through the scope of the project and this is I'm going to step through this uh, in a step by step fashion where we can kind of see all the different elements that are going to be put in with this project. Um, the sequencing may not be exactly how it winds up being built in the field, but that, that's uh, something that the contractor, whenever we have one on, on board, will, um, will help lay out as well as the design engineer as, we, as they progress the design further. And so, so there in blue, moving up and down the screen is the existing channel, and you can see this is just kind of what it looks like today from an aerial view. Uh, we're proposing to increase the size of the culverts, both in height and width. Today, I think there's a 48 inch pipe and we're going with two very large arch culverts. Uh, one of the benefits of these arch culverts is that we can kind of dress them up to make it look a little bit nicer. As well as the head walls, we're able to put some, decor uh, some decorative stonework on the, on, the, on the head walls. So it's not necessarily just a flat concrete finish. We want it to look a little bit nicer and, and kind of complement the area as well. Um, here on the south, on the south side of the structure or on the upstream side, this is a, a drop structure. So with those culverts getting larger, that means that channel is going to get a little bit deeper. It's going to get significantly deeper in that area, uh, meaning we need, we need to have a grade control structure or a drop structure to change the grade from here, this existing point down to what we're going to be putting at at this lower point. I will also be putting some armoring on the outfall to help prevent erosion and undercutting of the new culverts. Uh, we will be putting concrete paving over top of the uh, over top of the new culverts, and then we'll be transitioning with asphalt uh, to the existing to the existing pavement. Uh, the, the roadway is going to be a little bit higher, and that's going to help contain those floodwaters, so that the floodwater will no longer go over the road in most cases and, and will wind up under underneath the road. That's, that's kind of the whole goes, goal is to pass more water under the roadway as opposed to over the roadway like it does today. And, and another thing to note on here is that the roadway section is getting wider and, that, and that's where I was talking about making sure that we're coordinating with master thoroughfare plans. And we wanna build that these, we wanna build these roadway sections to their full future section. So that if in the, in the future, Comanche Trail on either side gets wider, this this section is already wider and, not, and it doesn't have to be touched again. And we'll be putting curb and gutter along the bridge section as well as, uh, which further ties into the, the forward thinking, the thinking about the future. And then we'll also be allowing, having allowances for sidewalks there on both sides of it, uh, which that sidewalk is gonna help with the city of Lake Worth uh, park master plan. And we, we do anticipate using some decorative stone uh, from the area. As, as most of you are aware who, who live out there, there's a lot of stone in the area. So we will be using what stone we do need to remove uh, to kind of dress things up, make it a little bit more decorative, make it look look nicer, as well as complement the area uh, that's out there. And, and these, these are stones that are, that are considered historically significant uh, from the existing structure. So that, that's gonna help satisfy our, our requirements with our uh, historic preservation office. And, and another thing that I'd mentioned earlier is, is the relocation of some water and sanitary sewer lines. So on the south side of the roadway, we have uh, a water line that's going to be relocated out from underneath the, the new, new paving or the new, uh, new concrete by the drop structure, and then a sanitary sewer line that's being rerouted. Uh, so that it can stay stay below ground. Uh, so to pro provide a few more details and kind of sum summarize everything that's going on, you know, some of the benefits we're talking about again, life safety. We want to make sure that this is a safer crossing and uh, in, in during heavy rain events. Now, some decorative elements, like I mentioned, the stones that would be placed along the roadway, as well as um, Using stone in the in the forms for the uh, for the for the walls and, and for the drop structure, 
uh, improved pavement where you know we'll have concrete paving over the over the uh, over the new culvert and then allowing for a future trail uh, in cooperation with the city of lake worth master plan uh, park master plan uh, moving forward, uh, some anticipated milestones. Uh, this is kind of what we're looking at from a high level. We anticipate completing the design of the project in the winter of 2022 or 2023, uh, bidding and awarding in the winter or spring of 2023, uh, we, with construction to, spark, to start in spring of 2023, and construction to be complete uh, by spring of 2024. Uh, that, that's kind of what we're anticipating now as we move a little bit further along in design. And some of those schedules may be accelerated or, or may slow down based on some of the some of the challenges that we've identified already. And the funding, uh, this is from the City of Fort Worth uh, stormwater revenue bond funding. And currently, our estimate is about four million dollars for the construction and design of this project. Uh, and with that, uh, I'd be happy to open it up to questions. Uh, Mr. Crenshaw, do we have any questions in the chat box? We, we I do not have any in the chat box now. We have several uh, call-in users and uh, other guests that are on the line. Um, and what we'll do is we'll uh, try to mute others so that they're kind of not over-talking each other. So we can go in order starting uh, with uh, any, if someone has a question, then we'll let that person go ahead and try to mute the others so that they're, again, we're not over talking each other. So, very good. Now, if you, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself if you are muted. Okay. Uh, yes, this is Scott and Cindy Landers. We live on the corner of uh, Malaga and uh, Comanche Drive. And uh, we have some questions about uh, the duration of this project. The Of, of the construction itself? Yes. So we're, we're currently anticipating that to be about a year. Uh, but okay. you know, at, at this point, we don't have full engineering plans. Uh, and we don't have a contractor on board to, to say that that's exactly what it would be. Uh, but right. right now, that's kind of what we're anticipating is about a year to do this. Uh, How will you reroute traffic? At, at this stage, we, we haven't looked into the detours yet. Uh, that, that is something that our designer will be fleshing out as they start moving along. Uh, as, as well as the contractor, uh, that, that's something that'll be paid attention to. Um, I'm not anticipating at this point necessarily a full shutdown, I, though it, it it may be that that may be in the in the cards. But but at this point, it's it'd be premature premature to say to say uh, exactly what the detour route might be, or, or if we would have to completely close the road down or not. Uh one other thing I, we wanted to ask was the sidewalks that are going to be put in, are they going to be on both sides of the, uh, I thought I heard you say they were uh, either shared between Lake Worth and Fort Worth, or they were going to be on both sides of the uh, road, the bridge. I, I think we're currently showing it on both sides. Um, and I think the one on the south side may be a little bit wider. I'd, I'd have to double check the detail on that uh, as far as what we're anticipating. But I think we're showing it on both sides right now. Unfortunately, we are not able to get the, the Fort Worth site up. So we're asking questions that could probably be answered if we were able to look at that. So <laughs> anyway, I, I you know, uh, I guess if you haven't got a contract yet and you don't have a start time and 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 uh, there's a lot of things that uh, are kind of un, unknown there at this point for questions that we may ask, you know, we're the closest one to that bridge. Right. And right. we yeah. see the flood, we see all the flooding and we see all the people that go across it, the kids and the just you know they stop on the bridge and they sit on those blocks out there and it's a danger to people coming by 
uh, you know, at high speed, they come down that road, Hiawatha and, and Comanche wide open all the time. Mm. And so firsthand, we see it because we're out in our yard, you know, uh, they're just that there's a potential there, like you say, of uh, a threat to people's lives, whether it be floods or whether it be just walking across the bridge. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, one I, other question in regard to the future. Are y'all in the sidewalks? Are y'all planning on putting a sidewalk down Marina or down Malaga? Not with this project. Uh, but, but we didn't want to, with this project, we didn't want to kind of hamstring ourselves and make it to where if, if in the future sidewalks were, necessary, were to be installed, we didn't want to make it to where this culvert crossing would be an impediment to that. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I guess that's about all we have. I don't know if anybody else will be online. Some of these folks around here don't have access to. They they had questions. A couple of them did that on the house on the corner of Pop Pueblo and uh, Hiawatha, which are the next closest. They're a Lake Worth resident. They got something from I don't know whether it was Fort Worth or Lake Worth, but. They they live in Oklahoma and they lease that property over there, mm. but they're up in their but they're up in their 80s and they don't understand all the technical aspects of trying to log on to a site and discuss or you know leave co uh, questions. So, but I, mm. I'll pass on whatever information I've got here. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, my, my my phone number. Uh, I, I appreciate you saying that. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna. Uh, say my phone number uh, out loud just so for any call in users. If you want to jot that down, you can give me a call. Okay. Uh, my phone uh, number it, is it's 817 392 7953. Okay. And and I, I didn't catch your first name there. Um, my, my name is Justin uh, Naylor. N is in Nancy, A Y L O R. I did hear your name, yeah. Jumps in there. Yeah. Okay, well. Uh, Thank you for uh, the feedback. Yeah, yeah we appreciate but, it. And, and we, did, we, did know, we did know that, you know, this was gonna happen. We've lived in this house for 11 years now and uh, nearly almost before we moved, or just after we moved in, they were talking about doing something to that bridge because it has flooded big time a lot of times. And uh, that's a, the people just try to drive across it. You know, they're just crazy. <laughs> yeah, and and, uh, it's, and it's kind of amazing the, the the small amount of water that it takes to float a vehicle. Yes, and you know sometimes the city doesn't get out there quick enough because what you have you're dealing with here is flash flooding. And since they built those apartments up above, they rerouted a lot of that water and it comes down through that creek a lot faster. And uh, so I myself walked out there and put the barrels across to keep people from going, you know, across it. Uh, you know, I can't keep them from doing it, but at least I'm making an attempt to stop them from going in there, you know. So anyway, generally Lake Worth comes out and does it, you know, uh, within a, as quick as they possibly can if they get a call. But uh, I guess that's all the questions we got. I don't know whether there'll be anybody else on there or not. Justin, we had a question on the chat. Um, can you speak to kind of where we're at in the timeline? So this is our about roughly 30%. And the question is, are we going to have some more community meetings and uh, as additional information is available to pass along? Right, that's a great question. Uh, so, so like Michael just said, we are at about our thirty percent set of thirty percent set of information. Uh, th this is the first community meeting on this project. We we do anticipate having another community meeting at the sixty percent set of plans, and then at the ninety percent, and then one final one uh, at the pre-construction meeting, which usually the contractor is going to be in attendance on that one as well. Uh, so, the contractor is going to be able to help answer a lot of the kind of day-to-day -day type questions that. They're going to most impact your your daily lives during the construction process, and so we do anticipate more con community meetings. 
And Justin, could you just touch on that if, uh, as the as the gentleman mentioned there, that there's folks that that you know their neighbors and and how they could maybe get you could maybe get their contact info and and get the other additional. We can do mailings, but that's kind of the limit of ours. But if the neighbors know neighbors and they can pass that on to you, then maybe we can get their contact information. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, as, as I stated before, my my phone number is is uh, it's eight one seven three nine two seven nine five three, and my email address, if that's easier for you, is justin dot naylor at fortworthtexas dot gov. Uh, and and if and if you, any of your neighbors were not able to attend, or you were and you, you or you think of a question later that you'd like to ask, feel free to reach out to any, either of those ways to me in either of those ways, and, and I'd be happy to get back to you. And, and if your neighbors have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to share my contact information. Uh, Justin, this is Jeff. There is another question in chat. Um, how will the walking bike trail meet and go over the bridge? It is into Sansom Park area now. If we could go through some detail on that, that'd be great. I, unfortunately, I don't recall offhand exactly what all is in the in the trails master plan. Uh, but but with this project, we are providing an allowance for for those sidewalks and that trail on the on both sides of the roadway. Um, so it's it's going to depend on on exactly where the trail is coming from. So I, I may not be following the question uh, perfectly. Uh, but, but again, our, our intent with this project is to not hamstring future improvements, which would include that trail. So I think we may want to start asking some of the call-in users. If, if you're a call-in user and you have any questions, feel free to uh, unmute yourself. I don't know if you as a call-in user would know that you're calling user three. <laughs> um, but, but if you, if you are a call-in user, feel free to unmute yourself and, and, and ask your question if you have any, or if you're on, on the computer, feel free to do that as well. Justin, we don't have any more on the chat right at the moment, um, and don't see any others unmuting themselves. Well, I, I, um, well, I think it sounds like we've, we've kind of reached the limits of the, the questions right now. Um, and certainly feel free as, as you digest this information a little bit more. If you have any other questions, uh, please do reach out. Uh, we, we are here to, to help answer questions. Uh, so we, we will be moving forward uh, with design. We'll be, we will be continuing our coordination with the City of Lake Worth as well, especially on those utilities. Uh, and, then, and then as we start moving further into design, we'll, we'll certainly keep uh, City of Lake Worth apprised of, of what's going on. Um, and, and, and again, future meetings will be notified and in similar ways, we'll send out mailers. Um, hopefully at some point, uh, the meetings will be allowed to be in person again, uh, but, but right now we're, we're doing the best we can with the online meetings. And so uh, if there are no further questions, I think we'll go ahead and call the meeting to, to a close and 
I want to thank you all for your time and your participation. I thank you for your interest in your community and, and making sure that you understand what's going on. I think that's a very, very important role uh, for the residents to play and for, for all the citizens to play is to be informed and to be involved. So uh, again, thank you all. And uh, if, if you have any questions, please do reach out. So thank you all. And with that, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording. and We'll call it a meeting.